hello students today we will begin with phylum chordata phylum chordata has three main characteristics first is that it has a dorsal tubular hollow nerve cord presence of a nerve cord is a characteristic feature of phylum chordata ventral to the nerve cord is the notochord now notochord exists in all chordates in lower chordates it is present whereas in higher chordates this notochord is replaced by the vertebral column this is the second characteristic feature of phylum chordata third characteristic feature is that a series of pharyngeal gill slits are present with in the pharyngeal wall and uh, these gill slits again are present only in the phylum species that is in fishes whereas in other phyla uh, in sorry uh, in class species and whereas in other classes that is um, amphibia reptiles birds and mammals they are lost during development so these are the three main important characteristic features of chordata these features will be found in non lower lower chordates whereas in higher chordates they may be found in the embryonic stages so uh, before we discuss other things let us just see the basic plan of a chordate uh, suppose the body is shaped like this this is the mouth pharynx this is the tail this is the dorsal tubular hollow nerve cord which in higher vertebrates and the anterior side develops into the brain this is a dorsal nerve cord ventral to the nerve cord is the notochord this is a basic plan of a chordate hypothetical plan this is the mouth then the pharynx region the intestine and this is the anus this is the anus heart is present here this is mouth this is pharynx and uh, these are the pharyngeal gill slits so as i said this is a basic hypothetical layout hypothetical layout of a chordate so basic three characteristics is a dorsal nerve cord ventral to the dorsal nerve cord is the notochord and the third characteristic feature is presence of pharyngeal gill slits now this is the tail this is called post anal tail because this is behind the anus so these three characteristic features are present in all chordates members of the phylum chordata now chordata has been divided into sub phylum so uh, let us see the classification of chordata now chordata has been divided into sub phylum those that have a rudimentary no uh, notochord are called protochordates so th these are the sub phylum protochordates are those that have a rud rudimentary nerve cord and though 
in those the notochord is replaced by vertebral column are called the vertebrates or we can say vertebrata let us write vertebrata now protochordates these animals are usually marine they have an unsegmented soft body which is uh, in the shape of a vase or worm like body is like a worm they are bilaterally symmetrical and uh, common exam they have uh, further been divided into subgroups and these three subgroups are hemichordata example of hemichordata is balanoglossus then we have cephalochordata example of cephalochordata is amphioxus and uh, the third group is urochordata and example of this is herdmania so these are characteristic features of protochordates in which the notochord is rudimentary when notochord is replaced by vertebral column uh, it is called vertebrata now vertebrata has been divided into five groups five classes species then we have amphibia third is reptilia fourth is apes or birds and the fifth is mammalia we will be discussing the features of each of these subgroups in detail we will be discussing the characteristics of uh, class species under phylum chordata species are the fishes fishes you know are exclusively ac aquatic they are found in water they are exclusively aquatic that is found in water because they are found in water their body has been is adapted to live in water swim in water so we say they have a streamlined body suited for living and swimming in water in water then uh, these animals have gills for respiration and have fins for swimming fishes are cold blooded animals a uh, cold blooded also is called poikilothermal which means that their body temperature is not fixed it keeps changing with the surroundings or we say their body temperature is uh, body temperature fluctuates with that of the surrounding then uh, these animals they have a two chambered heart just one auricle and one ventricle besides this their skin is uh, slimy
and is covered with scales. Now, uh, fishes can be of two kinds. One category of fishes are called cartilaginous fishes, as the name itself tells us that their endoskeleton or internal skeleton is made up of cartilage. So, two kinds, one kind are called cartilaginous fishes, skeleton is made up of cartilage. The other category are called bony fishes in which the skeleton is made up of bones. Now, I will divide the board into two columns and will discuss the two kinds of fishes and do the comparison at the same time. This is cartilage fishes, cartilaginous fishes and bony fishes. Now, as the name tells us, the endoskeleton in cartilaginous fishes is composed up of cartilage. Here, endoskeleton is of bones. Now, these fishes, cartilaginous fishes, are exclusively marine, found in sea water, in ocean water, salty water, Whereas these fishes, bony fishes, can be found both in fresh water and marine water. That is, their habitat is fresh water as well as marine water. Now, uh, cartilaginous fishes have five to seven pairs of gill slits. And these gill slits are not covered by an operculum. Operculum in case of cartilaginous fishes is absent. These fishes have four pairs of gill slits and these gill slits are covered by an operculum. Now uh, in cartilaginous fishes the mouth is ventral whereas the mouth is terminal in bony fishes. Then uh, the next point of difference is that the swim bladder or the air bladder is absent in cartilaginous fishes whereas it is present in bony fishes. Common examples of uh, these are uh, stings, no, sorry, skates, rays and sharks like uh, torpedo which is electric ray, electric ray is called torpedo. Then we have trigon, which is stingray, and the common dogfish. Dogfish is called scoliodon. Here we have carps, flying fishes, and flat fishes. These are common examples of bony fishes, like labio, the common rohu, the edible form. Then uh, the seahorse, which is called hippocampus, seahorse. Besides this, there are some very fish, ferocious and dangerous fishes like mandarin fishes, mandarin fish, um, like angler fish and lion fish. These are ferocious bony fishes found in marine waters. So these were the characteristics with examples of phylum species. Now we move on to the, uh, I'm sorry, not phylum species. These are class, this is class one species of phylum chordata.
phylum chordata has been divided into five classes. There was slip of tongue. I'm sorry for that. Mm. Now the second class, we have discussed the first class. That is species. We move on to the second class, which is amphibia. Amphibia. The word amphi means both. So organisms or animals belonging to class amphibia live both in water and on land. These are the animals that are the first terrestrial vertebrates. First vertebrates that are found on land. First terrestrial vertebrates. Uh, these animals can live both on land and in water but they lay their eggs in water and fertilization is external. So a portion of their life cycle is completed in water. We'll be coming and explaining that to you. First important characteristic is they are cold-blooded animals that is poikilothermal which means body temperature fluctuates with the environment. So when it is very cold or it is very hot to avoid those unfavorable conditions they hibernate in winter that is hibernation which is also called winter sleep. They undergo hibernation and they astivate or astivation is summer sleep. This is there to tide over unfavorable conditions. That is unfavorable conditions of temperature mainly. When it is too cold, they sleep under rocks, uh, metabolism falls and that is called hibernation. And when it is too hot also, at that time also they astivate. Then these animals have four legs or we can say two pairs of limbs. And therefore they have been included in tetrapoda. Tetra means four, poda means legs. So they are pentadactyle. Sorry, they are pentadactyle, which means they have five fingers. And generally, they have four toes in the fore limbs, front limbs, and five toes in hind limbs. But these uh, toes are without claws. Claws are absent. Mm, the heart of amphibians is three chambered, three chambered heart uh, which has two auricles and one ventricle and as I was telling you in the beginning they are found both on land and in water. Their life cycle is completed in water. They lay eggs in water and fertilization is external that is fertilization occurs in water fertilization is external and the uh, uh, during formation of the adult the metamorphic states it undergoes metamorphosis and one stage which is the larval stage is important and the larva is called tadpole found in water. So this is how they develop. These are important uh, characteristics of amphibia. Now coming to common examples. Frogs, rana tigrina, then toads, buffo buffo, then salamander which is called mud puppy. So these are some of the very common examples of amphibia. <coughs> As 
as I told you, amphi means both. They live both on land and in water and their life cycle is completed in water. Now we move on to class 4, Reptilia, under vertebrata. Sorry, uh, answer. Reptilia. Uh, reptiles or reptilia, they are the uh, first truly adapted vertebrates for terrestrial life. That is, they can live on dry land. They can live on dry land. Uh, these animals are also cold-blooded. Their uh, body is divided into head, neck, trunk and tail. In case of amphibians, the neck is absent. Uh, body is only divided into head, trunk and tail. These animals, uh, that is reptiles, they have two pairs of limbs. They are pentadactyl, pentadactyl, and uh, their pentadactyl means five fingers, and each of these fingers end in claws. They are clawed. Then uh, uh, respiration takes place by lungs. On the contrary, we had seen in amphibia, respiration uh, can be by gills if they are in water. Uh, that is the tadpole and other uh, larval stages in water uh, breathe by means of gills. When they are on land, uh, they can breathe through skin, moist skin, through buccal cavity and by means of lungs. Here, respiration is judged by lungs. Uh, these animals have a four chambered heart where the ventricles are not completely divided. They have two auricles and uh, two ventricles but the ventricles are partially divided by a septum. And uh, these are oviparous animals, lay eggs. The eggs are large, yolky and shelled. In amphibians, the eggs are not uh, shelled. These eggs and fertilization in these is uh, internal, shelled eggs. And uh, examples of these are all the snakes like cobra, viper, crate, cobra, viper, crate, then even the water snakes. So all snakes come under this, then wall lizard, house lizard, hemidactylus, then uh, garden lizard, chameleon, monitor lizard, tortoise, crocodile, alligator, turtle, all these are examples of uh, reptiles. So this was about reptiles, then we come to the fourth class under vertebrata, that is apes. Apes are the birds and uh, birds, they are uh, also have a streamlined body and they are well adapted for flight. Birds are um, quite evolved vertebrates, they are well evolved evolved vertebrates and they are suited for flight that is we can even say they are adapted for aerial mode of life because they can fly their uh, body is covered with feathers and uh, their uh, four limbs are modified into wings 
then um, their neck is very flexible it can move in all directions neck is very flexible their bones are very light and spongy because they have air cavities in their bones because of these air cavities the bones become light and so the birds can are adapted for aerial mode of life heart is four chambered two auricles and two ventricles then in the in birds also birds are oviparous fertilization is internal the eggs are large yolky and shelled and uh, these birds show parental care that is the chicks that come out of the eggs are taken care of by the parents parental care is evident in uh, birds and all birds like house sparrow pigeon peacock ostrich all belong to uh, apes this is class 4 then we come to the last and the most evolved class of uh, vertebrata that is mammals mammals are the most evolved class of phylum vertebra vertebrata word most evolved class of phylum vertebrata uh these uh, animals are viviparous that is give birth to young ones and look after the young ones till they are independent of the leading a life they feed their animals on milk produced in the mammary glands of pet because of which they are called presence of mammary glands because of which they are called uh, mammals then uh, these animals also have four chambered heart they are warm blooded the body is covered by skin skin has hair sweat glands and even oil glands or sebaceous glands are also present in the skin parental care is seen here and uh, examples of mammals are uh, rats cows cats dogs apes monkeys squirrels chimpanzees and humans so these were the characteristics important characteristics and examples of the five classes that is species amphibians reptiles birds and mammals with important examples with this we have completed kingdom animalia also and the chapter on diversity in living organisms